Gymnastics is one of the world's oldest and most revered physical disciplines, requiring extraordinary strength, balance, agility, and coordination. However, gymnastics academies are uncommon in many areas, and formal instruction is often expensive, making it difficult for some to get involved in the sport. Fortunately, it's possible to get a good grip of the basics on your own, as long as you're smart and careful about training. To learn fundamental gymnastics skills, you only need a place to practice, practical knowledge of correct technique and safety measures like crash mats or a spotter to help you with more difficult skills. 1. Approach each skill as a beginner. Start learning all the most basic skills from the ground up. You may have performed some gymnastics moves as a kid or think you have a pretty good idea of how it's supposed to be done. But if you want to learn the right way you need to put pride aside and start from square one. Looking at each skill like it's your first time will help do away with any misconceptions you may have and orient you with the correct technique. Any expert will tell you that the most important aspect of getting good at anything is mastering the basics. Spending more time becoming confident with fundamental skills will benefit you in the long run. Some good techniques to add to your repertoire when you're first starting out are backbends, bridges, headstands, handstands, forward and backward somersaults, cartwheels and splits. 2. Focus on technique. Do every skill the right way or don't do it at all. Proper form and precision are the two most important components of the sport. If you learn something the wrong way, not only do you run the risk of injury but you might also establish bad habits that affect every skill that builds off that movement. Film yourself and compare it to the photo and video tutorials you're using to review your technique. 3. Practice regularly. Whenever you get a chance, set aside time to drill the techniques you've learned. Only work on skills that it's safe for you to do by yourself or under the supervision of an adult or someone else who can spot you. This will mostly include simple floor movements. Flips and other complex skills will be too dangerous to learn on your own. Formal instruction can provide you with useful cues for learning more quickly, but the progress you're able to make depends almost entirely on how hard you're willing to study and work. Try to set aside at least three hours a week to train. Remember, practice doesn't make perfect, perfect practice makes perfect. You should always put special emphasis on the correct form when training and give it your all. 4. Make sure you're physically prepared. Before you start flipping, pirouetting and standing on your head, you should work to reach a base level of physical conditioning. Build your muscular strength by performing calisthenics exercises such as push-ups, pull-ups, air squats, and crunches. Go for a jog or swim laps a couple of times a week to get in better cardiovascular shape. Begin stretching thoroughly every day. Flexibility plays a critical role in gymnastics. As you progress, keep up with your strength and conditioning exercises and increase their intensity. If you have a history of serious injury or a condition that makes strenuous exercise difficult or risky, gymnastics may not be for you. But other sports are out there. Move on to backwards rolls. Squat down with your weight over your heels. Lower your weight until your butt touches the ground, using your hands to guide you if you need to. Rock backward, tucking your knees up toward your head. Tilt your neck to one side and roll over your shoulder, pushing through with your hands to assist you. Come to a stop by touching down with one knee at a time, then rise to your feet. Because of the amount of control you have over the early stages of the movement, the backward roll can be learned at a more gradual pace than the front somersault making it easier to master. Test your flexibility with a bridge. Lie flat on your back with your knees bent, feet on the ground. Bring your arms up and back until your palms are resting on the floor beside your head. Use a coordinated push to hoist your body up into an arched position, bending backward as the name suggests. Make sure you're in a stable stance by keeping your hands and feet planted firmly. Reverse the motion in a slow, controlled manner to return to your back. The bridge requires a moderate amount of upper body strength for stabilization, so you may have to work up to it over time. Lower yourself slowly to keep from bumping your head. Try a handstand. From a normal stance, stagger one foot in front of the other. Lean forward at the waist, keeping your torso rigid and straight with your arms extended over your head. Place both hands down on the floor. At the same time, kick up with your back leg to elevate yourself into an inversion. Push through your shoulders, keeping your arms locked. Use small adjustments of your fingers and palms to maintain your balance. When you're ready to come down, lower one leg back to the floor at a time. Practice handstands against a wall until you get the hang of kicking up and balancing. You'll need to know how to recover safely if you should happen to lose your balance while in an inverted position. Simply bring one or both feet to the floor underneath you if you're falling backward and turn slightly to one side and step out if you're falling forwards. Learn to do a cartwheel. Stand at the ready with your hands by your sides. Take one long step with your dominant leg, raising your arms up over your head as you do. Shift your weight forward and teeter your upper body down towards the ground as you shoot your back leg up forcefully behind you. This action is similar to kicking up into a handstand, 
only this time you'll set one hand down after the other while following through with your kicking leg. Let the kick carry you up and over the top, landing on the same leg, then following with the other. This skill takes its name from the movement of the spokes on a wheel. Imagining yourself turning over in the same fashion can help you learn the correct hand and foot positioning needed for the technique. Cartwheels are tricky because to pull them off successfully, all four limbs must coordinate independently of one another. Start by practicing them at a low angle until you get the timing right, then gradually kick up harder until you're more inverted. The cartwheel is an important prerequisite for the one-handed cartwheel, round off and aerial skills. Wear comfortable clothing, pick out clothes that allow you to move freely. Competitive athletes work out in team uniforms, usually leotards or tights, but at home, you can wear shorts or sweatpants with a tank top or anything else that feels good to bend, twist and leap in. You also have the option of wearing shoes, which will protect your feet, though they might feel clunky when you're performing skills that require a high level of coordination. Above all, you should be comfortable and uninhibited. If you have long hair, pull it back in a tight ponytail or bun to keep it from falling in your face. It might be a good idea to bring along a pair of shoes when you're practicing outside, or any place with rough, uneven surfaces. Find suitable places to practice. Since you won't have access to an actual gym, you'll have to exhibit a little creativity in coming up with places to work on your skills. For floor techniques such as cartwheels, backbends, handstands, and basic tumbling, a simple grass field might do the trick. In addition, some public playgrounds have equipment that you could use to practice bar skills like swinging, casts, and landings. Always have someone around to help you when you're playing around with difficult or risky maneuvers. A low wall could be used as a vault. A tree stump could serve as a pommel horse. Rings can be bought and hung for cheap. The only thing limiting you is your imagination. which refers to how much a muscle lengthens. 
is a key benefit from stretching and yoga movements. Everyday tasks like tying your shoes, reaching for items in cabinets, and lifting objects can become easier. Similarly, muscle coordination can improve with regular stretching and yoga practice. All of these benefits become even more important as you get older since muscles naturally become tighter and shorter over the years. Yoga and stretching are ways to keep those muscles loose and limber. Range of motion. Stretching and yoga can keep the body's joints, tendons and ligaments lubricated and can improve range of motion. Range of motion refers to the distance your joints are able to move their corresponding limbs. An increased range of motion from stretching allows you more mobility and agility. Increased agility provides better balance and reaction time when dealing with instability. These benefits are important at any age, but especially critical as you get older. Various types of stretching as well as other supportive self-care strategies such as self-myofascial releasing using a foam roller, can help to enhance unrestricted movement of the major joints of the body, including key areas that are designed to be mobile, such as the hips and shoulders. Better circulation. Stretching and yoga encourage better circulation of blood throughout the body, including to the joints and muscle. This yields quicker healing of any muscle injuries and more nutrients coming to the muscles at all times. Pain relief. Stretching and yoga can provide relief from back pain and arthritis. For lower back pain, stretching the quadriceps and hamstrings as well as the hip and pelvis muscles can contribute to relief. Stretching and yoga can also ease headache pain by improving circulation and oxygen flow to the head. The relaxation aspect of stretching and yoga may also contribute to pain reduction. Relaxation. Stretching and yoga can be antidotes to stress as they ease and loosen tight muscles and offer a sense of well-being and tranquility. In addition to the physical ways these exercises can provide benefits, the mental calm also contributes to relaxation. Some people have used yoga to cope with issues like anxiety and depression. Improved posture. Better posture is another benefit to yoga and stretching activities. Tight muscles can contribute to bad posture. But stretching those muscles can improve alignment in your back and help posture. The particular areas of stretching that yield these benefits are the chest, shoulders and lower back. As a result of poor posture, repetitive movement patterns, improper body mechanics, and spending long periods of time seated, muscles in the body can become chronically tense, tight and contracted, causing them to become less strong and supple. Regular stretching utilizing a variety of flexibility training techniques helps to improve overall function by ensuring that the body can more effectively respond to the stresses imposed by various types of movement and activity. Flexibility training is an essential yet often overlooked health-related component of fitness. Numerous studies support the short and long-term benefits of various types of stretching, including static stretching, dynamic stretching, and proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, just to name a few. Here are 10 reasons why you should be stretching on a regular basis. Decreased stress. Chronic stress can produce a number of undesirable responses in the body, including increased feelings of anxiety, fatigue and tension. Regularly stretching has been shown to reduce mental tension and, when combined with mindful breathing techniques, may also help to decrease anxiety and depression, reduce pain and stiffness. Excessive muscular tension can increase discomfort throughout the body. However, studies have shown that regularly performing static stretching can help to decrease stiffness, reduce pain levels, and may even reduce the frequency and severity of muscle cramps. Improved health. Regularly performing stretching exercises, such as PNF stretching, static stretching, and stretches for mind-body disciplines such as yoga, can help to reduce blood pressure, heart rate and breathing rate, counteracting the body's physiological responses to stress and muscular tension, may reduce risk of injury, although the evidence is far from definitive. There are some promising findings regarding the role that stretching may play in helping to reduce the risk for injury. Dynamic stretches are often used as part of a warm-up to help increase core body temperature and functionally prepare the body for the movements that are to come. As a result, stretching is often considered an important part of injury prevention. As cold muscles and tendons in the body have a greater likelihood of rupture, strain or sprain, enhanced performance. When included as part of a well-rounded fitness routine, regular flexibility training, which includes dynamic stretching, can help enhance agility, power, speed and muscular strength, improve blood flow and circulation. Regular flexibility training can help to improve blood flow and circulation, thereby allowing for the enhanced transportation of oxygen and nutrient-rich blood throughout the body, minimized wear and tear on joints. When muscles become chronically tight and tense, opposing muscles become weakened, producing unnecessary wear and tear on various joint and structures within the body. Regular stretching helps to ensure the muscles on each side of a joint maintain an equal degree of pull so that the joint is able to move freely and efficiently in all directions, 
allowing for optimal movement and less stress on the body, improved quality of life. Although there are physiological changes that occur as we grow older, regularly stretching and performing range of motion exercises can improve flexibility at any age, helping to increase longevity and enhance overall quality of life. Thank you for watching. Check my products for yoga and stretching exercises at home in the description below. Share and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.